Welcome back, friends. I hope everybody is doing well and having a great week. Um, we have a new project to work on today. For this week, we are working on landscapes. So um, we are going to talk about landscapes. We're going to talk about um, a few things along with that. We're going to talk about tints and shades. You will learn what that means. We will also talk about something called perspective in art. So I have a list of materials you're going to need today. You are going to need one and a half sheets of paper. So you can cut one of those in half. Once again, we are painting. So the heavier the paper, the better. So if you only have copy paper, we will make that work. If you have heavier paper, this is cardstock. Um, drawing paper, anything that's a little heavier is wonderful. You are going to need three colors of paint. You are going to need black, you are going to need white, and you are also going to need a color of your choice. Pick your favorite color. Today I am working with blue. You can see my example up here. I used red, um, green, purple, any color. It's your choice today. You're going to need a little jar of water, some scissors, some glue, a paintbrush, in a black marker. So go ahead and hit pause and come on back when you are ready. All right, so here we go with our landscape. We are going to start with your full sheet of paper. And I would like you to fold, take that full sheet of paper and we are going to fold it into thirds. What I mean by that is I'm gonna fold the bottom up like that and press my fold. And I'm going to fold the top, there we go, fold the top down. They do not have to be perfect thirds, but as long as they're pretty close. Now, it's kind of like if you've ever folded a sheet of paper to go in an envelope. Same kind of thing. You're folding the bottom up, the top down. Should look like that. Press your fold and then open it back up. And you will have three sections. You can see here I have three sections that are about the same size. They do not have to be perfect, just pretty close. Now I'm gonna be pulling out my paint. I have my white paint, my black paint, and my favorite color paint. This one is your choice, remember. So mine is blue. I also am going to need my brush. And what I'm also using today is um, this lid, this yogurt lid. So it's just a plastic lid if you wanna use a paper plate, you wanna use, um, if you have washable paint, you can use a regular plate paint. Some people have these fancy little palettes. You are more than welcome to use anything that you can put paint on, and we're gonna use this to mix our paint, okay? So I'm using this because I think probably more people have something like this at home than something like this at home. But use what you have. You can even use um, a stack of paper towels. You can use anything, anything you can mix your paint on. So what I wanna do is I'm going to take my blue paint, favorite color paint, and I'm gonna put just a little bit on there. So I'm going to take this blue, unmixed, plain blue, and I'm going to paint my middle third. Ooh, fractions, friends. Pulling some math in today. We have one third here that I'm going to be painting with my favorite color. So take that brush. Hopefully you have a little bit wider brush here. Different brushes do different jobs. So my wider brush is better for painting these big areas. I don't have any little details I want to put in there. Just all one color. Now anytime you need to hit pause on this video and get caught up, go ahead and do that. In a few minutes, we're going to have to take a break while our paint dries. So hit pause then and come back as soon as that paint is dry enough to move on. So that is my blue. That is my color. Now I'm going to make something called a tint. A tint is when you take a color and you add white to it, you tint it. Now I know when your vehicles and your cars or trucks, if you have tinted windows, those are black, right, or gray, so it's a little, little tricky, a little confusing. A tint in color is when we add white to that color. 
So I'm saying tent, not like tent, like what you use to go camping. I have some kiddos that get confused with that sometimes. I'm making a tent, T-I-N-T. -T. So I've got, there we go. I've got my white and I'm gonna take what's left of my blue here and I'm gonna mix it together. Now when I'm mixing colors, I think we've said this before, but I usually, I want to take more of the lighter color and then I'm gonna add the darker color to it. Because darker colors tend to kind of take over and usually we need less of the darker color, more of the lighter color. Now you can see I have this nice looking light blue color. So I'm gonna paint my bottom third with that. It really doesn't matter which section gets which color, but. That's what I'm doing here. I'm gonna be cutting these sections apart here in a few minutes. So if you get the wrong color in the wrong section, that is not a problem. There we go with my wider brush. Finish that up. Might take you a few minutes to get this all filled in or you might find that you didn't mix enough paint and you gotta mix a little more together, so. No biggie. And you might find that some areas are a little darker or lighter than other areas. That's fine too. As long as it all is a tint, it should all be lighter than this section. All right, so I'm gonna take my jar of water here. I'm gonna wash my brush out for this next part. Clean brush, scrape it off on the edge. See that? Get all the extra water off of there. Now, I'm gonna take my lid palette again. I'm gonna add a little blue, and I bet you can guess what my next color is. I'm going to add, whoops, just a little bit of black. Got a little much there. Remember, we don't need, we always wanna add the darker color to the lighter color. So in this case, black is my darker color. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of that black. You can always add more, but you can't take it out. So just do a little at a time. Add that black to your blue. Mix it up real well till you can't see very many streaks anymore. Now, that is called a shade. Tints and shades. When you take a color and you add white, you get a tint. When you take a color and you add black, you get a shade. So I'm going to take my shade of blue. And you'll be able to see that nice Color up here and with some colors you'll see a bigger difference if you add black to say yellow which is really light it's gonna be a big difference if you add white to yellow you won't see as much of a difference you see a little bit of one Oops. got a little out of my lines but that's okay I'm going to paint just cover up the white there this down a little bit so I can get my whole, oops, come on, sheet, my whole sheet cover here. Finish filling in that white. If you need to mix a little more again, go ahead and do that. It might be hard to get the exact same shade, but do what you can. All right, there we go. All right, now this is the point that you're gonna have to hit pause. We want that paint to dry just a bit um, so that you can cut these sections apart. You're gonna be cutting on these lines. So go ahead and hit pause, come back in 10 or 20 minutes and we will get moving on with our landscape. Okay, now my paint has dried. You remember I have my shade up here my tint down here. So I'm gonna take this off of here now and I'm gonna be I'm gonna cut these sections apart. So right along where my fold line is, you can see. And this is where my half sheet of paper is gonna come in. So let me stick this up here. Okay. Now, 
The next words we have to learn are foreground, middle ground, background. Those are the parts of the landscape. You can see over here in my example, I have the, the shade of red, red mixed with a little black, 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 excuse me. That is my foreground. This is the area that is closest to me in a painting. My middle ground is the red here, red without anything mixed in. That's my middle ground, that's a little bit further away. And then the background is my tint, my lightest color up here. That's the furthest thing away from me. Those, I put some mountains in there. The very furthest thing away from me is the background. So foreground, middle ground, background. So what happens when we have foreground, middle ground, background, when we have things that are closer and further away is there are a few hints that will, will tell us in a painting that something is closer and something is further away. That's called perspective. Perspective is how we can tell what's close and what's far. And there's a few things that will tell us. First thing is something called atmospheric perspective, which is the colors. The further something is away from us, the lighter it looks because there's air, there's tiny little water droplets in the air, there's haze, there's moisture. So when something is really far away from us, it looks lighter. And that is why I put my tint there in the background. And then as it gets closer and closer, we can see that the colors change. They look a little more pure. They look a little bit darker. So atmospheric perspective. Another way that we can tell what is closer and what is further away is where it's placed on our paper or in the painting. So something down low is closer. The, the foreground is usually down lower in the picture down here. Something towards the middle of the picture is probably the middle ground and something towards the top of the picture is further away in the background. So there is one other trick that artists use to show us what's further away and what's closer. And we'll get to that in a minute, but first I wanna get our foreground, middle ground, background. So I'm going to start with my tint. So here it is. This, remember, is going to be my background. That's gonna be really far away. So I'm going to cut, I think in my background, I'm gonna make some mountains because mountains, are really tall. You can see them from really far away because usually there's nothing that tall that is between us and the mountain. So that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna get a little bit of glue on my mountains here. Now this paper likes to curl when you have paint on it. So especially if you have thinner paper. So I'm gonna use a little more glue than normal, more than just a dot. Put some lines on there if you can see that. So I'm going to take that and then put it up high on my picture here. And get you to stay. There we go. My middle ground, my medium color. Maybe I'll put some hills right there. I don't want to cut too much off of this, but just enough to show that I've got some hills. There we go, that looks pretty good. Get some glue on there. That's my middle ground. That's gonna go in the middle of my picture. Again, if you guys need to hit pause to catch up, go ahead and do that. We don't want you getting behind and getting confused. And there we go. And What's next, friends? What's this one called? Does anyone remember? My shade is my foreground. The closest piece to me. Look at that. Beautiful. So I'm going to get some glue on there. Just enough to really make it stick. If you need to let it sit for a little while under something heavy, maybe a book. That'll kind of flatten it, get rid of that curl. All right, there it is. Now, I have my foreground. Oops. Yep, see? My foreground, my middle ground, my background. Parts of a landscape. This is closest, this is further away, and that is the furthest. Now, I told you there was another trick that artists use 
to show us what is close and what is far away. So the colors, things further away tend to look lighter. Where it is placed in the painting, down low is closer, up high is further. The third trick they use is the size. So you can see over here, my biggest tree is also lowest down in the foreground. I have one here in the middle ground and one in the background. And notice that the further away they get from us, the smaller they look. If something is close, looks bigger. Something is small, it looks further away. You can even do that right now. Maybe look at somebody or something in the room you're in that's close to you. Go like this. I'm gonna go like this and I can see that something that's close to me looks taller, something that's further away looks smaller. So artists use that trick. So you can put anything you want in your picture. I'm not gonna add a ton of details because I really want to be able to, for people to notice my painting, but maybe I could put, maybe I'll put a tree here in my foreground like I did on my other one. But maybe I'll mix it up a little bit. Now I'm using black, my black marker because this is more like a silhouette, kind of like a shadow of something. So there we go, and I'm gonna color it in. The light, a lot of times we see silhouettes if the light is shining from behind something. I'm not adding a lot of details because I really do, I want my, when someone looks at my, artwork here, I want the focus to be on the landscape, not on all the trees in my landscape, but they do make it a little more interesting. So with trees, I just like to do V's. So one V turns into a smaller V. That V turns into a smaller V. The branches get skinnier and skinnier as we go. That's how I make trees. And I guess this is winter because my tree doesn't have any leaves on it, but you can make yours however you want. So there's a tree. I think I'll maybe put a little house. Maybe somebody lives way up here in the mountains in a little bitty house. And I know that house is pretty far away from me. It's pretty small back there. Maybe a little chimney on that house. Something really simple. And maybe I'll put, just to have something in my background here, maybe I'll put another little tree now you might have, there's also something called cityscapes. This is a landscape. There's something called cityscapes. So if we're drawing a picture of a city or making a picture of a city, I could make my, maybe make my middle ground, the shape of the roofs of buildings, or um, we have lots of options there. So in different details you wanna put in there is totally up to you. So that is our landscape friends. We learned about perspective. We learned about foreground, middle ground, background. We learned about tints and shades. So lots of fun things uh, mixed up in this, in this lesson. So I hope everyone is doing well. I hope everyone is staying healthy and having a good time with your family at home. And I hope that this helps to make your week a little bit brighter and a little um, more normal since everyone's missing out on school, missing out on art class right now. So I hope you enjoyed it and I would love to see some pictures. Thank you so much.